Hello, and welcome to The Secret Show on Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. This is episode number 207, and it's me, Patricia Steer, and we have with us Mark Sargent. Mark! <laughs> Do <laughs> not movie. adjust your set. <laughs> it is actually me. I've got a question to ask you, just one. Yes. W-T-F. <laughs> I thought of a funny joke for that, but I, I, uh, I was abducted and replaced by a nearly exact replica. I thought perhaps they brought you in because your programming was out of whack, but well, you yeah. had to re yeah, I had to reset my baseline. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it included a lot of subliminal pictures, not unlike this right here. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, um, welcome back. Hi. Hi. <laughs> we had literally, you guys don't know this, I literally have not spoken since my absence. And people who may not even know that you had an absence. Oh uh, yeah, those what, people. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are people who have no idea what we're talking about and me saying WTF, they're thinking, what's wrong with her? Well, they're no. probably thinking that anyway. But um, <laughs> uh, when did the absence actually begin? I don't even don't remember, to be honest. Uh, I just know that I wanted to refocus on everything that was flat earth, get back to basics and kind of start 2018 anew. Interesting. And so as you can tell, I've got a brand new microphone, uh, which is not a globe, it is a half, half globe thing. It's from um, eBerry. It sounds really, really good. And the good? banner behind you is excellent. <gasps> brand new banner. It's not the It's Flat license plate, which you can only see partially. It is a Google Flat Earth Clues, which is inspired by this little number right here, which was sent to me by DITRH. And I've got one too. I was going to show mine. A book. Oh, you were? Oh, I'm taking your thunder. There <laughs> it is. Uh, Google Flat Earth Clues. And it's, by the way, it's not reversed on your side, is it? No, it's perfect. Okay. Now, here's the thing the mic sound keeps going in and out, and it could just be me. From me? Yeah. Testing one, two, three. This is a test of the emergency broadcast system. The broadcasters in your area in cooperation with federal, state, and local authorities. You're probably wondering why I have that memorized. It's for D-Day. Oh, okay. Is it, is it still coming in out? Should be fine. No, it's fine now. It just was a little while ago. So no. going into the chat and seeing what's All right, I gotta, I gotta pop going on. <laughs> Rob oh, Marles. <laughs> Someone right. says that necklace thing looks very uncomfortable. It's actually very comfortable. Is and it, very It's odd. not a necklace thing, though, is it? It certainly is. It is a necklace thing. And it reminds me of something. If space oh, were real and Mayan we did have... Priestess? Yes, from another planet. Mayan yeah. voodoo priestess from another planet. That's yeah, you, what you, I... You, yeah, you see those giant necklaces in space movies where... And it's generally the people wearing it, especially in that color, they're not good. They're no, exactly. Evil. They're not good at all. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking Flash Gordon from 1980. This reminded me indeed of Flash Gordon. Yeah. The Queen, I think, in Flash Gordon. So. And the soundtrack was done by Queen. How weird is that? And the band Queen, how did we not know that, <laughs> <laughs> that, that Freddie, Freddie Mercury, Mercury was gay? I, well, yeah, let's I start our show before we start Flat Earth Talk with mm -hmm. a toast to 2018 and the... Uh, reunited and it feels so good oh, aspect of wow. the I secret show <laughs> hate that song. i always so hate that song well because i was a kid when i when I, that song came out and it was you know it's so slow and so sappy peaches and herb not herb herb yeah Ugh. but i do have a lovely drink right here had this uh, with you before my uh patron cafe xo coffee flavored uh, liqueur i'm coffee. going to have one drink of it, one little nice. shot. And I have exactly one glass of Chardonnay. Lovely. Let me get mine ready. The last time I drank drank from this was with you when we were doing one of those shows where we were reading uh, basically mean tweet comments. Right. And there are a few of those out there. We haven't done any show like that for quite some time. No. And it, it, it kind of mixed reviews on that because some people don't like the negativity and other people think it's kind of funny. Right. And some yeah. people love it just to see the drinking. 
<laughs> There's that. So maybe this show will turn into that. Maybe. All right. My wish for 20. My hand looks huge when I bring it to the camera. I'll stay back here. Man hands. I know. <laughs> well, for you, it's fine. <laughs> um, what is it with the perspective on our cameras that that we use for Skype or for YouTube, Google Plus, where whenever you put something very close, it takes on the dimensions of you know a monster? Well, it, it, is it just it, the type it, of camera? Yeah, yeah, an autofocus close range camera. Remember, it was meant for like most cases your your thing, laptop. Like I can't actually reach my camera, but as I get really really close to it. So it's meant for close range. That's all it is. So it magnifies really quick. That's all. You, you see that all sorts of people. You can zoom in really, really fast. Well, I'm going to propose a toast to Flat Earth, to the Flat Earthers, and to you, Mark, because you are a very important part of this journey that we're all taking together. Oh, well, thank you. And to 2018, May, uh, Western civilization as we know it, uh, reach its inevitable conclusion. Well, that's depressing. No, I didn't say it was bad. I'm just saying it's a. I think the bad is implied with the word conclusion. Uh, what do you want me to say? <laughs> How <laughs> about may flat Earth be brought into the hearts and minds of more and more people, so their lives can change for the better. Indubitably, indubitably, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Hmm. Ooh. I've had worse. Yours is stronger <laughs> than mine, though. It certainly is. What's my proof? 70 proof. Mine's about 10. This is very syrupy coffee liqueur, and it doesn't taste like tequila, although it is Patron, and I keep it in the freezer. Coffee-flavored tequila. It's so awesome. good. It's, I, and I don't like tequila at all, um, and I feel like a rush just after that little sip. <laughs> Speaking of freezers, Houston... And Texas in general and other parts of the U.S. have turned into freezers. Last night, it was 26 degrees, which is Celsius, negative 333. Three. Really? Snow here that's stuck and ice as well. Crazy. Right. It's raining up here in the northwest. It's a lot of rain. And when it snows and ice is in Houston, even if it's less than an inch, everything shuts down. Right. I haven't left my house for several days. And, you know, the mail people still deliver because neither rain nor snow nor sleet nor whatever the case may be, that's their credo. But, you know, there's nothing. I mean, the streets are silent, highways silent. Um, you know, it's just people are scared to go out. And I'm not sure if there's been car accidents, but I would imagine because the road's ice and people aren't sure how to drive in that kind of a condition here. So Yeah, it tends to throw people. Like in California, whenever it rains, people get really their their driving skills. But remember, because down there it doesn't rain that often. It never rains in California, as that yeah. song goes. Yeah, it doesn't. Not that often. So when it rains just for a little bit, the the oil and transmission fluid and all the fluids that are soaked into the concrete pop up a little bit and it gets a little more slick and since people don't know how to drive it eh, whatever mm, it's my, all it's all it's all relative i had my chat up and it disappeared i'm gonna go locate it i've got and i've got the chat up. meanwhile oh, okay i still want to see it too meanwhile you go you start with something interesting and i will f pull the chat back up okay the thing we should probably talk about first i've got a list of topics on the left side of my screen which is, uh, and I just heard about this today, somebody wrote me and said and was concerned about the Joe Rogan, Neil deGrasse Tyson debate. And they didn't know the whole story because Joe Rogan apparently mentioned yesterday, again on his show, that there was going to be a debate. And the guy must have missed the first part. And he's going, I'm really concerned about who is it going to be that's going to be debating Neil deGrasse Tyson. And you and I already know who it's going to be. It's going to be Eric Dubé. That's, that's what he's trying to line up because Eddie Bravo is a fan of Eric Dubé and he is trying to, he was, he, he convinced Joe Rogan that, yeah, you got to get named, you, you know, Joe, Joe Rogan has ties to NDT. So the rumor right now is that sometime in February that NDT and Eric Dubé are going to have this debate. And I don't think they're going to fly him in from Thailand. I think it's going to be a Skype connection like he did before with Eddie. Eddie he has Bravo. a horrible Skype connection. I know he does. 
I, but there's so many, I, okay. There's a couple, several things we should probably discuss here. First off the day after it was first talked about on Joe Rogan's show, Eric Dubay's channel goes down. It, you know, just, I mean, down permanently this time where, and you probably watched it happen where it was like cleaned out the mostly mm -hmm. because of hate speech. It wasn't a three copyright strike thing, which we should probably talk about my copyright string strike, which I got in my absence, but I'll talk about that. In a I second. didn't know about that at all. I, cause I didn't tell anybody the, um, but Eric Dubay uh, was nailed for hate speech, but for two reasons. Cause so that was, uh, cause of the Jew world order. Yes, uh, he had a video on, and I've saved the, all that info. So no one, anyone says, "Oh, it didn't exist." Oh, it absolutely exist. I've got all the screenshots from it. It was a four-hour movie which he did not make. It was a reprint from somebody else called Adolf Hitler versus the Jew World Order, and it had like a ninety-something percent approval rating and a lot of hits, hundreds of thousands of hits. And Eric had it up on his thing since I think the end of twenty fifteen. And somebody nailed him for it. So Eric had no, he couldn't appeal. So that his channel was dead. 100,000 something subscribers gone, wiped out. And what's he back up to now? 10,000. The thing is, is that some would say, well, that just means he bought subs. And I'm going to defend Eric Dubay and anybody who's lost their channel for whatever reason. When you lose your channel, it's really hard to regain exactly what you had before unless you've got a smaller number. And, and and he had a lot of videos on him. Honestly, if my channel went down, it would take some time to, I mean, I've got a thousand, I broke a thousand videos also during my, my absence. And it would take a long time to put a thousand videos up, just an upload. It would just take forever to- Well, save. you'd have to have your videos saved somewhere, of course. I do, I have, I have most of them saved somewhere. Uh, but I, I don't know if I'd, I'd upload this. But thing. it's getting the subscribers back. That's the trick. The subscribers, yes. So so here's the problem with Eric debating NDT. Okay, a couple things. One, I unless it happens, it hasn't happened. Meaning NDT, if anyone knows the story about NDT, he has never done a debate against anyone on any topic ever in his life. I he believe never, he said that he won't debate. Yeah, he won't. He's already said on certain things, I won't do debates. So is Joe Rogan talking out his ass? So maybe it's not a debate. Maybe it's going to be a conversation. Well, I mean, Joe can spin it any way he wants. But if well, it could want, have been broached to Neil as a conversation with a if, flat earther. If you're Neil, you the last thing you want to do is get into your first heated argument or heated you know discussion with a flat earther, especially somebody like Eric. Two, there's some concerns here, and and honestly, I have to go with with Matt Boylan on this one. You, I will say this, Matt ha Matt has gotten a lot more coherent when it comes to his videos recently. And the video he put out, I think was last night or this morning, was that he was really concerned about this debate between mm -hmm. Eric and Neil. Yes. And he should be, because after what Eric did w in, during the Eddie Bravo interview, can, can, can you trust him? As Let's far as talk about that for those who are unaware of what happened. I watched it. So... Eddie Bravo, who is a fan of Eric Dubay, had, did a special show. And Eddie Bravo does not do a lot of solo podcasts anymore, but he did one specially for Eric and he piped in Eric through Skype, I think, or Google Hangouts or whatever it was. But the bandwidth from Thailand, wherever Eric was, was terrible. It was awful. I mean, it was, it was staticky. And at some point, eventually, they had to cut out the video altogether. No, those but underground bunkers. I mean, Thailand, they don't have really good con connections. <laughs> I, saw, I saw what you did there, a little subliminal hot sex messaging. Mm -hmm. the, and and so eventually they had to kill the auto, but before they did, and I, I, I predicted this during that interview, I said, if he goes longer than 90 minutes, he was perfectly civil, perfectly fine, but if he goes longer than 90 minutes, he's gonna get too comfortable and he's just gonna start throwing, throwing shots out, loose cannon style. And that's exactly what he did. That's when he condemned the conference in Raleigh. He called everybody in the Flat Earth community shills. In fact, he called it Shillfest, Shillfest 2017. And then he goes on this tear. He starts making fun of Alex Jones and starts imitating Alex Jones. And he wouldn't stop to where... Uh, He's Eddie comedic. He is a good mimic. but And none of us really in Flat Earth are huge Alex Jones fans. And many of us found Alex Jones before Flat Earth and learned a great deal from him and then later saw through him. and right. Or we still watch him. I don't. but And just take the good from it and leave the bad. But yep. making fun of people always makes the one who's making fun of 
the person look bad. Well, yeah, especially since Eddie Bravo was just on Alex's show the week, and they're before. kind of friends, or yeah, they're friends. Idiots. And Joe Rogan and Alex are are absolutely friends. So the, you know, there's there's definitely some crossover uh, relationships there. And Eric and 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 Eddie's trying to get him to back down. He wouldn't do it. He just kept going to where Eddie accident. You know, all of a sudden the stream was cut off briefly. Uh, you know, accidentally. You know how that works. It's like you know, all you have to do is nudge over to your tech guy. It's like get up, get him off. Get him, get him off, so we can at least talk to him. This offline. is a theory, of course. We don't know for sure. Oh, please! It was so obvious. I, I was waiting for it to happen. He was doing. I was going. It was somebody, somebody, somebody like this. A, you see the guy going like this. Somebody <laughs> killed a feed because he wouldn't shut up about it. And I get it. It's like, oh yeah, fine. Attack Alex Jones. Great, fantastic. It, like, look, you got to know your audience. Anyway, the point is, is if it happens then I believe there's something going on, you know, as far as they're letting it happen because there's no reason for NDT to actually get in the same room with Eric. People have said for the longest time that Flat Earth is being let out. And that's how a lot of the shill accusations come into play, where they say you or me or math or DITRH or um, anyone really right. is part of the process of letting it out. The, I believe if they are letting it out, they are people who we don't know their names and they meet right. in dark rooms and um, they probably might not even know each other's names. It's that right. secretive. And none of us here on YouTube are part of that sort of thing. But if but they it, were to tap Neil, one person tells another, taps, tells another to go do this thing, that's yeah. how it would be let out. Um, Neil himself might not even know that he would be a pawn in those higher ups game. He, he may not. Uh, I, again, I would say. I know you want to run him over with your car, but. Uh, I, oh, you heard that. <laughs> yes, I did. I, I, I look, I only do because he has no replacement. If you believe in theater and all the world's a stage, Neil has no understudy. There is nobody to back Neil up. If something happened to Neil, wink, nudge, something happened to him. Nothing. There is nobody to step in his shoes. Literally, Bill Nye cannot do it. Michio Kaku cannot do it. Brian Carl Kaku. Sagan, the ghost of Carl him. Sagan. Yeah. Well, well, Carl Sagan handpicked him, correct? Yes. And yeah. so, um, I wonder if NDT has handpicked someone as well, but we don't know about it yet. If, if there is, I mean, I mean, yeah, he could surprise come out of nowhere like Obama. Mm -hmm. you know, Obama was like nobody, and then all of a sudden he's going to be our next president. Like, I never heard of him, and my family lived in Michigan, which is close to uh, you know Illinois, Chicago, and I never heard of him. Although I don't pay any attention to politics. Indeed, he seemed to come out of nowhere. But then again, people say you came out of nowhere, and I came out of nowhere. We all come out of nowhere before right. we come upon the public stage. I mean, that's right. a ridiculous statement. Google flat Earth clues. Mm -hmm. The um. Okay, so let's let's get past that. So we'll if, when we know more, we'll let you know more. I'm sure somebody though will announce it because Eric hasn't announced it on his channel. I haven't seen any of Eric's Some followers talk about. Say it. it may never happen. There is no date for right now, but it is the second time that Joe has mentioned it, and he mentioned it for February, which I thought was interesting. Which means he's got a date in mind, but I haven't seen any acceptance. Kind of good. Part part of me doing my declaration of war when I was off offline. Cue the drum beats. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. <laughs> is because of that, because I want to take the fight to them, which is, look, I've done a, enough interviews and I've done enough interviewing of people and gotten into enough back and forth with, I won't even call them necessarily debunkers. There's a few out there, but I need to I need to get in into it. So the the declaration of war is pretty straightforward, and I've gotten some bites already. One we've already shot the footage for it, which was a professor from Georgetown that was going to go against me. I don't know if they're going to actually air it. The German television company produced that one, and then there's rumor for a uh, professor group down in UCLA. They're thinking about it right now. And all I'm doing, and I, again, I don't care if it, they don't want to fly me down. They want to do it over Skype. That's fine. But the, the the challenge is out there. I said, look, all you have to do is fly me down, put me up in a hotel, stack me again, up against whoever you want. One -on -one, what about one -on you fly down yourself and pay for your own hotel or bring a pup tent? And uh, will you still do it? What? You pay for my own ticket? Yeah. Why not? Well, no, because no, here's, the, here's why you don't want to do that. Because then you're going to get false offers. 
you're going to get people that are just going to go do it. He's going to feel go anywhere. We're oh, that's say, true. People, you got to, unfortunately, because the world is a very dishonest You're going to say, you know, Monday, Cleveland, 3.15 p.m. Yeah, yeah. And no you push. fly there and there's nobody there. Exactly. Go so far as, as to even put a fake uh, footer at the bottom of their email. You know, oh, yeah, PhD of blah, blah, blah. You know, they can sound very convincing. And in fact, I've had people, there was, I don't know if you remember, it was at least, at least a year ago where a German supposedly a german physicist wanted to debate me i, I said fine but, but he contacted gotta... me before you actually and it's like okay get you. You, use your real name you got to use your real name it's like what's that got to do with it why would i have to use my code are you kidding <laughs> so what am i going to do i'm going to debate you and you're going to have what you're going to be on a black screen Come it on. would be fair if you weren't using your real name and you weren't using your image on camera for the other person to do the same but if you're doing it and then they would have to do it it's only right. fair it's only fair right. if you put yourself on the line like that the other person should be willing to or there's something wrong yeah and that's that's my thing it, which is i'm putting myself out there here's my name here's my phone number here's my backstory come get me you're so confident in your science come get me whatever it's going to be i don't i honestly i would not care if you have a panel of six people coming up against me. My only criteria was that somebody with a master's degree in a physical science was at least supervising the event. I've got a, qu a question about that. And many other people have said, well, why? Why does someone having a degree matter when we in Flat Earth know that um, having a degree is, is nice if you want to have one, but it's not a necessity and it doesn't guarantee intellect? Oh, oh, that's the end of the question. Mm -hmm. It's it's because if you don't have a master's degree, then you're just anybody on the street. We, I mean, we've had people, people make videos all the time. But then again, that would require you have a master's degree. If no, we're no, 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 no. I'm the bad guy in this story. Real I'm, face, real name. They I should be the same. No, no, no. I'm the villain. I don't have to remember the, the, the burden of proof still lies with mainstream science. It, as far as breaking, no, you're not going to get... Look, on our side, there's a reason. Remember how I said anyone with a master's degree, I said this a long time ago, anyone with a master's degree or higher in a physical science, they're so conditioned, they're doomed. They're never going to come over to flat earth. All we can hope is that they can challenge against it. You're we're never going to get the Red Rover scenario where they, they come against us and break ranks, you know, jump over to our side. People say, you know, was my ride here already? <laughs> Anyway, I think they came right from Martin Lead Key Flat at British's <laughs> channel in Wales, right to your house. The siren, by the way, in case you didn't hear it. Yeah. The okay, so that that's why we ask for the master's degree because they are so indoctrinated that they. Who, why not? Who, who else are you going to get? I mean, if you want somebody with a bachelor's degree or less, I mean, you're going to just be arguing. I mean, that's half the people in the debunking channels already. I mean, it might as well be Red's rhetoric, if you're, and we've already talked to them. We need heavier hitters, which is why we're trying to challenge anybody in mainstream. You've talked to Red's rhetoric. Wait, wait, wait. What? No, no, no. I haven't. Oh, I haven't. Jared other, has. Other people many have. Times. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm not going to. What is he? How is he old? How old is he now? 17? But Push I think me, it's Push amazing 18. that he does have a lot of intelligence at his age, whatever it may be, but he's also deeply indoctrinated and won't look at anything else. Okay. Or people think he's also an agent, but uh, I don't ever no. call anyone an agent because I don't have proof. I, look, I still don't think anybody's anyone on either side is an agent at this mm -hmm. point. I don't even know if Neil deGrasse Tyson, because you wouldn't, if it was me controlling the puppet strings, I wouldn't necessarily let Neil in on the secret. I Why? don't think he really knows the the truth. No, nah, he's just enjoying himself. I mean, my God, that guy's got a lot of gigs. He's got a bigger wine collection than I do by far. Oh, man, oh yeah, he enjoys his wine. That's mm -hmm. his thing. He he he. All he does is lecture around the country. I mean. Literally, he's he's just a jack in the box. Nice, crank it up. Job pops, pops up. Space is amazing. Pay me. <laughs> That's what he does <laughs> all the time. That's all he does. It sounds goes, like a fun job. It, it is a fun job. And, and, and if you sure, don't know, you're lying. So if he doesn't if know, he's lying. I guess ignorance is bliss, and he has made a hell of a career from it. And uh, look, he's. He doesn't know any better, but at the same time, he is the face of science. So he's got to, they've got to put him in front of us eventually. So. A lot of people feel we're in the wrong when we say this, that he doesn't know any better. Most likely we are just guessing. He could be completely in on it. 
But I think that the powers that should not be are a lot smarter than that. And there's you don't, the smallest amount of people that know the truth. You don't. And the, the reason why you don't let him in on it, and this is just me, but if you, the reason why I would not let him in on it is because eventually you're going to let it, he's going to slip. He's going to slip up like like Dick Cheney or George Bush or somebody, anyone that's in the know, if they hear me, look, you, you repeat stuff enough times, eventually you're going to let something go. You're gonna you're gonna go off sideways just for a second. Someone's gonna throw you a curveball. You be like, "Yeah, you mean the rocket that hit the towers?" I mean, next question, you know, something like that. You know, where? So Neil, I don't think knows that much. He may know so a few a few things, but I'm more curious about his handlers and and what he's allowed to do, or or does do they just let him go? And in the sense of fairness, I'll say. Oh, what do you mean? The directed energy weapon that hit the towers? Just in case there are some in our audience who are like, rocket, Mark, what? <laughs> what, what, uh, you know what I, what? I know what you mean. What, whatever. Um, okay, so that's the Joe Rogan, Eric thing. And Eric's going to build up his channel. Two things he's not going to have in it, though. I'm very curious. You'll, you'll like one of these, though. One, of course, he's not going to put back up the Adolf Hitler video. Know that for an absolute fact. He's put it on, um, I believe, Pinterest or Twitter. I've seen him links so to it there. Uh, yeah. But the other, you know, the other thing that seems to be missing from his uh, no positive comments <laughs> that I left that uh, will now have been deleted because I don't, I no longer make positive comments. Mm -hmm. I know that's a small little thing, but no, no, I no, make you, no comments. But you know, you know what's missing. positive comments. You know what's missing um, from his channel? His skits. I don't know. His what? His skits. His Saturday Night Live little He's parodies. He's put those up. I haven't seen them. He, I are think they, you might are, call them other things. The show potatoes, one, two, and three. Are they there? I hope so. That was good PR for you, me and you. <laughs> well, well, think of it this way, though. If your channel is taken down for hate speech, you get a little gun shy. I bet that stuff's still up there. You think? Somebody mm -hmm. go check that. Somebody mm -hmm. check if uh, if Eric Dubé actually put back up the skits on Shill Potatoes. The man has no shame. Of course he did. Well, again, you... Look, I would I, him, I would too. I mean, if I were, yeah. he's decided to designate himself as being the the um, the macabre evil character in this whole flat earth play that we're all living. Uh, whatever. It, look, if Eric wants to increase his credibility, all he has to do is one do is one thing, and that is meet other flat earthers. Anybody. Eric doesn't care about increasing his credibility at all. He believes he's fully credible. He believes whatever he's doing is the right thing to I do. Know, but I mean, as after the conference, basically everybody's met somebody. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Everybody right. in the Flat Earth community that's been making YouTube videos has met somebody else in the community that's making YouTube videos, except for Eric. Eric is doing his own thing. And when Eddie Bravo, remember that, when Eddie Bravo says, yeah, I'd love to meet you. Come down. I'm going to do your thing. I'll set you up with backstage passes. Eric won. He, no he waffled with a bunch of weird excuses. No excuse, basically. It was like it was one of the few times I've ever seen somebody just shut him down. It was like, yeah. I, I thought he would have been on the fence. It's like, yeah, yeah, we'll do that. And then blow him off later. It's like, no, 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 it's not. I, I don't. Uh, I don't. Like, what? It was almost like he was saying, I don't leave Thailand. Yeah. I don't leave the. I don't leave the, the compound. <laughs> I don't leave the compound. <laughs> basically. I don't know. I'm not saying I know he lives in the compound or the military daughter girlfriend. I have no proof of any of this stuff. Eric Dubay could be a normal person just like me and just like you because uh, of people judging you as being Dennis Luca or me as being an agent and all the rest of those th accusations. I can't accuse another person when I myself am shocked at the allegations against myself. However, the fruits, the fruits, my friend, you judge by the fruits and his fruits. He's got some great information, but he always throws some rotten apples in there. Why? Well, so so far, I've looked at his channel since he's been rebuilding it, no. and nothing, nothing controversial as of yet. So he may know that YouTube will smack his hand, and that's why he's doing it on other avenues like Pinterest, for example, or um, uh, Instagram. Excuse me, not Pinterest. Maybe well, Pinterest too, for all I know. What What kills me is he was he would have been the first person, uh, and I, don't let me forget the BuzzFeed thing. Mm. That uh, he would have been the been the first flat earth would have been the first flat earther that would have been officially verified by YouTube. And if you guys don't know what that means, I'm not verified. I don't have enough subscribers yet. I, I, oh, it's all right, people. <laughs> and my life's in ruins. <laughs> <laughs> I think you, the word you're looking for is tatters. Tatters, yes, tatters. The if once you hit a hundred thousand subs, you can send a quick little thing to YouTube. I don't know why they don't do it automatically, and saying, "Hey." 
can I get my little check mark? And honestly, that's all it does. You've it's got the check mark, right? Nope. No. <laughs> no. Oh, you've got a fake check mark. I got a fake check mark. Just I, like a Dorje Daka. I think I stole it from him. I yeah, think, I, I think now, all did. I did was he he created that little green check box in hypertext or HTML or whatever yes, it was. Yes. And I just copied and pasted it. And I think that's amazing because something like being verified by YouTube is ridiculous. These sorts of barriers to <sighs> to rise. It's all part of that old globe system that we don't want to live in. And I think it's funny that he subverted it because it's not hurting anybody. It's not stealing money from no, anybody no. to do that. Or No, it's you know, not. It's but but Eric had 100,000 subs. He was the first one to do it. And before he had a chance to get verified, his channel was deep sixed. So, but do you know, there is actually another flat earther that just got verified. Who is it? It's ODD. That's fantastic. I, I don't know when it happened. Here's I just know ODD. ODD. First, first guy to hit um, 100,000 to get verified. Yeah. So good for him. The uh, I looked at I looked at it and yeah he's got hundred thousand subs and he's back kind of in flat Earth stuff I've been looking at his tracking videos it's like nobody gets out of flat Earth I don't he care said he was getting out what do you nobody say? you don't leave the agency I'm sorry when you, you get know. out they pull you back in <laughs> <laughs> tearing me apart the uh the, sorry that was Brando the which the other one was Pacino from Godfather oh I think I don't remember. Will they pull me back in just one minute? Yeah, yeah. Oh no, I think that was Brando from Marlon Brando was such a beautiful young man. I think that was Brando from and then later. What happened? Well it wasn't just age, because trust me, I looked pretty was, darn good at it was also in my twenties compared to today. But shrimp cock like. shrimp cocktail from what I could tell. Yeah, I think it was a bit too much <laughs> shrimp cocktail. It was turkey legs. <laughs> yeah. In the way of the Renaissance Festival, just a giant <laughs> turkey leg. Big <laughs> half thing of mutton. <laughs> oh, look, when you when you get when you get that wealthy, sometimes you just throw caution to the wind. It happens. Exactly. Look at um uh Orson Welles. Indeed, Orson Welles. Orson you made an interesting comment on Strange World on TFR last night, which airs every Tuesday, by the way, at 9 p.m. Central Time. Um 10 p.m. Eastern. I'll give them more important time zone eastern as ditrh calls it the real time zone yeah. uh you talked about um atheism and how there's you've often said there's no atheists on flat earth and i've been written to written to okay well i have had correspondence from people who said i'm an atheist and i'm a flat earther so i've stopped saying there's no atheists on flat earth and also i did that interview audio interview that's on my channel with hustler magazine about flat earth and i did mention the fact that there are some atheists on flat earth and uh, but you said that if you're an atheist you think flat earther or not that a person would be living like there's no tomorrow you know the giant turkey legs um yeah you know, yeah, coveting the, thy neighbor's wife, <laughs> whatever. The basically, case. yeah, the, the seven deadly sins, that's basically your roadmap. Exactly. <laughs> game plan for 2018, seven <laughs> deadly sins. <laughs> it's my bucket list. <laughs> break out those 10 commandments. Will you? <laughs> I want to break them all <laughs> tonight. <laughs> exactly. I think I can do four of them right now. <laughs> With my two hands tied behind my back. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, that's terrible. As but, Richie but, from Boston says, but I digress. <laughs> But, but but that's how I kind of feel. So when, yeah, and I, I know I've tried to change my tune a little bit. I've said that being an atheist in flat earth is very difficult. It's not impossible. But for me, true atheism is sort of hypocritical because a true atheist shouldn't even be talking to us. They shouldn't even be online. They should be running naked through the streets. They, because it's like, look, if, if there is no tomorrow for you, what are you doing? Why would there be? Well, that's another question. I don't know. See, before I became a flat earther, I wasn't an atheist, but I was one of those people who was just in the matrix and don't really believe in any religion, although my mom was Jewish and my dad was Christian. So, and I grew up with a Christmas tree and that kind of American Christianity, not right. having anything to do with God or Jesus, that I, I still had morals and values. They were instilled in me by my parents. And I have a pretty strict code of morals and values, actually. Right. Um, and that had nothing to do with religion, God, the good book, or commandments. But I do think that Ten Commandments are pretty much all you really need to be a good person. But they could be told to you by your parents without using, quote unquote, Ten Commandments. It's basically being good and not hurting other people. 
So I agree. I agree. does it have anything to do with being an atheist or not being an atheist? I appreciate, look, I appreciate that atheists will write me now and say, look, I'm an atheist, but I still believe in flat earth. That's great. But you're kind of splitting hairs. Remember how I said that one man's uh, advanced civilization is another man's deity. So if you're an atheist. Wow, that's a good one. Well, thank you. Somebody, I, I should copyright that in all its subsidiary. TM. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, TM that. Get on that, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. The um, no, but it's true, and that is, look, if you're an atheist, regardless, if you believe in some sort of enclosed structure, something that doesn't appear to be organic, then it what doesn't are we have about? to be enclosed. I mean, the flat Earth in general. I well, don't... yeah, but if but if it's not enclosed, then you run that conundrum. It could of, be a big bang of a puddle. Well, no, puddles on top of a much larger sphere, or puddles on top of a much larger structure. Okay, if it were puddles on top of a much larger sphere, that yeah. still screams creation to me. Is it though? Because we have, look, we have puddles that are on your sidewalk right now that little critters are living in. I know, but those little critters living in it scream I, creation to me. I know, look, you know me. I love the uncle enclosed thing. Atheists, I got nothing. I don't even know why we're spending that much time on them because there's because not that's that the many secret show. I, that's what we do. <laughs> I firmly believe, I know we're off in the weeds already. I firmly believe that uh, there's a lot of atheists out there that are just mislabeling themselves, mm. meaning they're more agnostic than they are. Okay, atheists. okay. It's yeah. like, okay, fine. I don't believe in, in one of the, the five big religions, but you know, but at the same time, then they kind of trail off. It's like, yeah, but there's something else out there. Uh, you know, they just it's like, what? Come on, you. They they generally don't finish the sentence. It was what I'm saying. They right. They, they, it's like they they seem to be. They claim themselves to be atheists only because they're trying to go after Christianity as a group. I rarely do I see it hear an atheist that says, "Oh yeah, by the way, and I hate Buddhism." No. It's well, my dad was from a Protestant family, and like I said, the type of Christianity, the practice that they did was have a Christmas tree, but an old line Protestant family. And my mother converted when my parents married from Judaism, her, her native religion. And he used to always tell me that he was agnostic, <clears throat> although he had a super strong moral code. But, you know, so that's interesting. Hey, by the way, on a, on a quick side note, I still have this. Just oh know. yeah, I've seen it changing colors and thought, wait a minute, the new microphone doesn't have color changing. No, that's because it's sitting it. down. So you see my face sort of being blended and there's see some colors change. That's yes. this is down by my thing. This is still the Chris Pontius microphone. And no, I, and I, Chris Pontius phone home is all I've got to say. Yeah. Um, when let's talk about Chris. When, yeah, when did that happen? Because, okay, first thing first, uh, let's go into the verified channels. What does verified mean? Oh yeah, we've verified lost total track. And I haven't even finished this one glass yet. Well, neither have I. I'm nursing it, but that's okay. Me too. The um, verified means that you have 100,000 subs and you and YouTube have acknowledged each other and say, yes, I have 100,000 subs. Therefore, YouTube says, hey, stick around for a while. Verified. Does that give you any added protection? I doubt it. No. I mean, YouTube is just a game. Yeah. Oh, especially since the adpocalypse. And I've been studying a lot of that in my absence. Interesting how things went down there. Google just basically abused their power and just went in and ransacked a lot of things and didn't tell anybody. That was You're promoting Google on your banner right behind your head. Hmm. What? <laughs> What's that? Over there. Put that there. Is that a cat? I no. think it's great, though, because whenever you go on a mainstream television interview or filmed interview, they'll look behind you, and while you're speaking about Flat Earth, there'll be a directive subliminally telling them to go look up Flat Earth Clues, and Flat Earth Clues woke me up, and I'm not a 100% believer in everything that you say. I don't mean I think you're lying, but what I mean is that I've thought about it and then added other things from other content providers, but this touch tone, the touch stone, the starting point for it all, for me anyway, was Flat Earth Clues. So if somebody Googles Flat Earth Clues, they'll end up becoming a flat earther, whether they fall into a power land or a Dubai camp or, or yours or someone else's. So I think that banner is an excellent choice. Thank you. And I made it myself. Really? I did. I I, I took the advice from uh, DOTRH, uh, and I just said, yeah, Google Flat Earth Clues might might actually work. And to break up the colors, I used Google's actual colors back there. Hopefully, trademark isn't going to apply. Because Google, I think, is actually a verb now. 
it's a yeah. company, but it's also a verb because when I you say, you. I Googled this, it's like, no, yeah. it's, it's synonym for searching. So I don't think they can actually trademark it in this sense. Not that I care. I mean, if they want, I mean, that didn't cost me that much money, but I just bought it online, you know, pick the banner out and, and send it over and Hey, great. Fantastic. Uh, it also, I, I did it horizontally because I think it's easier because I know you can do it diagonally, but I don't want people to like do that. When it's great. When in fact, I, I'm somehow compelled to stop listening to everything you're saying and Google flat earth clues. Excuse me. <laughs> it's funny. It's good. Okay. Sorry. So the verified thing, yeah. Uh, Google and YouTube, they're doing their, their stuff. Uh, but what was interesting is after the last wave of stories, Kyrie Irving, Mad Mike, especially the combination of Kyrie Irving and Mad Mike, which we'll talk about uh, later, prompted, as you know, a whole bunch of verified channels to finally get off their asses and make stories on Flat Earth. So now when you go in and type in Flat Earth, set no filters, you will see out of the top 20, I think at least half to two thirds of them are verified channels. You know what I mean? So ODD verified and who else? Can you name another person who's verified? What kind you of a know, check like is our it? Circles or just people that have made YouTube stories? <sighs> our circles, I'd say. Nobody. He's the only one so far. That's Jaren, Jaren and Rob Skiba will probably be the next ones. It's kind of a horse race at this point. I don't know who's going to get there first. Uh, hopefully they're paying attention to the rules that the, the rules are this. Once you hit hundred thousand, uh, all you have to do is go in. I, I'm not going to tell you the menu drop down and you petition. You just say, hey, give me my check mark. And then they just give you your check mark. There's no fanfare. You literally get nothing for it. You don't get any special menus. You don't get any special privileges. You You're don't get just... to sit in the front of the plane or anything. And get no. Like... Yeah. You don't get business class points. You are or economy plus. There's no extra, extra leg room in this at all. You just get a check mark. But for whatever reason, that's subliminal check mark it registers with some people so it, it's a good i thing. didn't know really there was such a thing as being verified at all until this conversation yeah it's a real thing you wonder why those little tiny check it's it's not very big honestly the big ones we've been putting in our videos i know you and uh and, and yeah yeah hey, th they help in in some cases although like when i was looking hang on if i punch up real quick here let me go into youtube real fast if I punch up the top flat. While you're looking, I just want to say this is Greer, my black cat, and she was over chewing paper. So I grabbed her for those who wish to see a beautiful cat. Okay, real quick, beautiful cat. She is a beautiful cat. Beautiful cat. Uh, okay, so the first ones that come up, and I please anyone out there in the chat room, Where's my chat box? Where did it go? Did it just disappear? See, mine disappeared too, which was very weird. Uh, maybe because I rebooted it. It doesn't really matter. The um, Anyone can check this out if you want to get a chance. If you type in Flat Earth and don't set any filters, you know who comes to the top of the list now every single time is Vice News. Remember the Vice people from HBO that spent several days with us when we were down at Raleigh? And you see Chris Pontius. This is why I mentioned it. Now I have to see Chris yes. Pontius. Yes, okay, now we're back where we were. Yeah. Chris Pontius. Sorry, it took a while oh, to no. get back here. Woo. Chris Chris Pontius, I know we were off in the weeds. Now we're back on road. Chris Pontius is now at the top of the freaking list every time I type in flat earth, which is fine and all, but no one can find him. Chris Pontius' website, if I'm not mistaken, flatearthmodels.com is gone. That website isn't even up anymore. And that's a little strange because normally when people uh, take a hiatus or do whatever, they leave other things working. I mean, even when I was gone doing my stuff, look, I was still making videos and nothing changed online. My online presence, but the footprint didn't change. But Chris Pontius, somebody tell me where his website is. Did he did he change formats? Where is it? Because flatearthmodels.com, and I only knew this because somebody who I referred Chris to, because I get that all the time, it's like, because they think I'm the one making the models because it's on my channel. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and they say, hey, can I have one of your models? He goes, not me, it's, it's Chris Pontius. And so I will shoot him to, and somebody says, that website isn't there. And I'm going, what? So somebody, if somebody knows how to track down Chris Pontius, please tell me. Well, what? we at least have him in our midst still. He's still out there, but he just doesn't have the website up, which is good news. Are you sure? <sighs> Do, is he, does anybody in chat, has anyone in chat talked to he Chris He emails Pontius? me from time to time and come to think of it. When was the last time you got an email from him? I haven't, well, you know, he got that Vice Media coverage and they positioned him on the um, thumbnail sort of cover shot of some of the things. Right. 
And maybe that pressure was too much for him because of course they tried to portray all of us as loons. I mean, and I hopefully, I know, you know, people, perceptions and everything. Yeah, if you see his face, you know, his his picture there, it's actually a pretty good picture of him. You know, He's but- He's got very he, long flowing hair. Very long very flowing proud hair. Of it. And people merely think, oh, it's a 60s hippie, right? But which there's nothing you, wrong with that. No, there's nothing wrong with that. But you could imagine the harsh versions of that. Oh that yeah, maybe, people that maybe are were mean. posted. So if he was reading three through some of the vice comments, and I haven't looked through the vice comments, I don't I, look I at those sorts of comments. There's a lot because that video already has eight hundred and twenty-two thousand hits. Yeah, I That's looked true. at them initially and saw a couple about you that weren't savory. One of the ones about me said, "I'm a milf." And I'm like, hey, I'm not a mother to begin with, and that's disgusting. Well, yeah. But then I decided I'm out of here. I'm not reading any more of it. Yeah, that's an age thing. It's actually, well, you know, I mean, I know you don't watch porn on a regular basis. <laughs> the um, but it's it's a flattering comment. I mean, there's actually a category. But you have to be a mother first. No, 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 you don't. You just have to be that age group. Oh, because because oh. otherwise, you know, you just have to be. You don't actually have to be a mother because they don't want. Otherwise, you'd have to do a whole subcategory. Nuts. We should talk about porn subcategories, which would be <laughs> cougar. I'd like to the show circling the drain. <laughs> so, uh, and that would be kilf, and that just doesn't flow. No, it so, just sounds violent. Or yeah, exactly. So you know, so there's there's milf and there's gilf, which is grandmother. There's also oh really? Oh yeah. Well, uh, I I shouldn't be so disgusted because. If it's if you can think of it, it's a thing. Yeah, yeah. That's where we've come. It's a there's a law. The internet is. That's not how a, low we've gone. Yeah, yeah. The internet's not a safe place. No, it's so. <laughs> I'm so me. glad I don't. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, not. Well, we're on the internet. I mean, we know it's not a safe place. I'm so glad I don't have kids. Every time I see bad corners of the internet. <laughs> I mean, I just have to cover my cat's eyes every time they go near my computer. Exactly. All right. So the verified channels that are now and and the reason I'm mentioning this is it again if you type in flat earth no filters these the top 20 are not going to be changing anytime soon because of the verified channels that have now made flat earth videos so like vice news they're the top of the list for me secure team 10 they're verified rob skeeb is in there i'm in there with strange world 122 i have no idea that was just a freaking phone in show it's got pushing sixty thousand hits no idea why uh, Globusters is in there. Then you got ODD. He's verified. Uh, Rob Skiba uh, under Captain Mang because of the ABC Nightline, which we're still waiting for. Remember, they talked to him for 40 something minutes and me it, for. It happens all the time yeah. when you do an interview. I did an interview with the Houston newspaper here. They po they published one interview, but the other one they didn't. And I think the writer disappeared off the face of the flat earth. So it, what CNN talked to me for 45 minutes and did not release that one. Although the Los Angeles Times just did their thing. And I had somebody leave me talk about had having to hear it third hand, a listener to strange world who's living in Los Angeles, listened to an AM radio show where they were reading the Los Angeles times article. And the, the host was kind of going after me. So I got to get the audio and put that up when I get a chance. Uh, and they interviewed me, but there's um on, on the top 20 list. There's also hip hop out of Germany, hip hop.de uh nigga higa of course that thing's already broken 10 million hits comedy central when neil degrasse tyson was hitting bob uh complex news when bill nye is going after bob which we'll talk about inform overload all those ones i've been listing so far those are all verified uh usa today sports verified the fumble verified complex news again bbc news I hate seeing my face in that stupid thumbnail i scroll past it as quickly <laughs> as i can uh but you know, and then Joe Rogan's got a, like a series of four or five, and then finally Vsauce. And remember, Vsauce used to be always at the top of that list, and that thing's got 18 million hits, and now he's barely in the top 20. Good. But the point is, you guys, so what I'm getting is when you're searching for flat earth videos, just don't go by the main filters because those videos are not going to be changing anytime soon unless a big, big story breaks. Like. Well we have to mention the LA Times and Bob Nodell is the cover man on the main picture on these, uh, this this right. um, LA Times article that came out that you mentioned. Right. Um, Nathan Thompson is mentioned in the article and the official Flat Earth Globe and Discussion Group on Facebook is mentioned yeah. and several other people. So it's a really great it's exposure, it's although they totally mainstream media, what are they going to do? Put disinfo in there. It wasn't as bad as it could have been. And it was a fairly long article. So, you okay? You're gonna sneeze, aren't you? <laughs> I'm 
Oh, somebody, hopefully somebody screenshots that one because she looks like she's going to die. Uh, what was the other thing I was going to mention on this? That was the Kyrie Irving. Now Patricia is going to have some sort of brain aneurysm. If you guys don't know already, Kyrie Irving, <clears throat> basketball superstar for the Boston Celtics, currently the top of the NBA right now. As long as he keeps winning, people are going to keep going with the flatter thing, and and his his following just going to grow. He's mentioned several things. One, of course, uh, was that he supposedly learned reason why he's back in the news is he has learned he learned his flat earth content through Instagram which I thought was interesting I think he got the the YouTube links through Instagram not from Instagram itself yeah there could have been a few pictures there but I know you can embed YouTube links I don't use inter Instagram but it was it was surprising to me that he mentioned that because nine out of ten people mention YouTube, so why would he mention Instagram? I thought, and he was really persistent about it. It's like, all right, Instagram cutting him a check. Who knows? Uh, Kyrie Irving also, of course, made a fantastic Nike commercial where he mentions flat Earth physically. He has a physical metal flat Earth there that he spins, and it's part of his Nike Kyrie Irving four tennis shoe line. I'm sure those tennis shoes are not cheap at all. And he also brought it up in a special flat Earth shoe displays case and what i'm looking forward to when it comes to Kyrie, because in fact i will open up the, the chat room here in a, in a second if patricia doesn't come back which is uh the all-star game remember it's been almost a year now next month will be a year to where he was in the all-star game it's if, a year ago was when he brought up for the first time during the all-star break the flat earth concept and now we're a year later and he is going to be going to another All-Star game, although for a different team. And you bet that during media day, what do you think is going to happen? Every, all the, the press corps is going to come in there. And it's like, we need somebody interesting to talk to. Let's go to Kyrie, see if he still believes in Flat Earth. It's going to be a fantastic All-Star game. Can't wait. I had a leaf because all of a sudden I started choking. And you can see water in my eye. And I my voice choking? is a bit... Yeah, it was a weird like, <laughs> no, not on what I was drinking, just that kind of crazy thing when you inhale and then all of a sudden you start coughing. So I'm crying over flat earth. I would too. It's very emotional. <laughs> it is. Uh, it actually is. Um, another person is authentic intent. We still don't know where he is. And, you know, with you, you know how we've got the expression of he pulled a tiger down about somebody who just disappears with you. We thought you pulled a tiger down, but anybody no, who disappears no, no, no. for a short time now and then reappears as if nothing ever happened, we can say they pulled a Mark Sargent. Really? <laughs> really? Oh yeah. my God. Um, two, okay, real. Okay. I'm moving Don't on. you feel honored? You've got a little. I do. I yeah. do. I feel honored just really to be doing this with you. And I'm crying over it, obviously. <laughs> and you should. So, okay, so the uh, the All-Star Game is going to be exactly one month from now. So the NBA All-Star Game 2018 will be February 16th through the 18th in, hey, Los Angeles. Right on. I didn't realize it was going to be in L.A. That's fantastic. And then, of course, the other one I want to mention is the Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Because you know why. Bowl. When is it? Uh, when I call it the Stupor Bowl because most people watching it are in a stupor. Well, it is a very American thing. When is the Super Bowl? It is oh Feb February fourth. Uh, my so, birthday is February fifth. There Just, you go. Uh, yeah, fifty five. Wow. How did that happen? Wow. Well, I will be the first one to say you don't look anywhere close to it. And you're going to be fifty this year yes yes i am yep in april i'll be turning 50. cool yeah kind of a big thing for me april fool's day <laughs> no no end of okay. april all right i was born yesterday but it was but it was early the all right so february 4th the reason why that's important is because mad mike has rescheduled his rocket launch is that ever going to happen i don't know I don't know, but he's saying that he's going to do it to, to coincide with the Super Bowl. I don't want it to happen. I don't want a person to potentially get hurt. But people will do what they're going to do. Look, the media, yeah, exactly. We weren't going to stop him. 
There, there's you know, no way can, we, nobody can stop a person. No one can stop this guy from, from launching. And I've already offered. You you probably heard me say that on several different things. Uh, I said, look, if he doesn't want to do it, I would be happy to take his place for the cause, for Flat Earth. If he wants to strap that's, me into that rocket, I'm going. Th that's kind of a bad idea. I Because a secret show with just me, it's not the same thing. You can find. I have to take time off from my internet doing, <laughs> go to your and interview call. candidates. I'd have to help your family pick up bits and pieces of you scattered to the four corners of the earth. No, no, the rocket wouldn't blow up. I think I'd just die on the, the, the crash. Yeah, but that your pieces would be everywhere. Oh, yeah, if it was like a skidding sort of Steve Steve Austin $6 million man crash right, where it was tumbling. Right. Yeah, I suppose. Then but it would no, just I, be, you know, I don't know. There's other things I could do aside from attend your funeral. I, Manager, I you know, I don't know. I try to do... <laughs> I, I try to lead by example. That is one of the, one of the things I've, I've followed my entire life. And that is don't ask anyone to do something that you wouldn't do yourself. All right. I know. I'm teasing and, case, and I, I admire you. No, no, no. That. But you, you know what I mean here. Meaning, look, I, you know, I don't want to sound like one of those guys like, oh, Mad Mike, hope he lives. No, 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 no. If Mad Mike changes his mind and he wants somebody, it's like, look, somebody's got to get in that rocket. I am going. I, I've already told the documentary team that's following him this. Because why not? I would do anything for this cause. Literally anything except for some sort of stupid food challenge those are just gross <laughs> when is it that the documentary team that put together what they did with you and i and bob and cammy and what others oh, that that group when is that oh, going to happen in fact I, that's funny you'd mention that because I daniel by the way the uh, yeah. he's been in several videos here on this channel daniel clark and awesome. caroline clark no relation yeah. The Caroline actually uh, emailed me because she was looking for a soundtrack. The, one of the artists. In fact, if anybody knows how to get a hold, in fact, I could tell you who it was real quick. They were looking. They should get some music from Twin Serpent. There's so much music. And there's there. another song by Somebody, Somebody in the Earthworms. I know that sounds crazy. Okay. The song they were looking for. And you can That's look a this, good one. You can look at this on YouTube. It's a YouTube Flat Earth song. Mm -hmm. It's by Good of All 72. Yes. His wife, and it's called uh, Have You Ever Seen a Curve, which I think is a knockoff of Have You Ever Seen the Rain by Credence? Oh. Or is that John, John? Was that John Fogarty? Yes. But mm -hmm. I, yeah. But, but so, yeah. Have You Ever Seen a Curve? They wanted to use that. And I go, so if anyone knows how to get a hold of Good of All 72, please shoot me an email because I've been shooting them stuff for the last 12 hours and I got nothing. Well, I'm so, going to give you links to those other two songs that I mentioned. Okay. And someone else is putting out lots of music is Shill Scanner, who's doing stuff with the Scarecrow and with Isa yeah. Mahalski and, and others. So Zane has uh, also done Zane stuff. is doing cover songs. Lots oh of new God. music coming out. So. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, yeah, and as you know, I, and I also did some stuff to my channel to where I consolidated a lot of my playlists because I got a thousand videos out there, which is a lot. Wow. And so, you know. So some of my playlists have hundreds in them, and one of them is the Flat Earth Music playlist, which has 200 and almost 250 tracks, but I consolidate. So it's not 2015, 16, or 17 anymore. It's 2015 to present. So I can just, because people you don't know, you can move entire playlists. So YouTube now allows you to do that to where you can say, okay, move all these things into this and all these so you don't have to spend too much time just individually clicking. Point is, there's a lot of songs out there. Get back to your thing, though. Their team is working on editing. They're working on it. It's absolutely going to be released. Question is, who's going to distribute it? And where is it going to go? Is it going straight to Netflix? Is it going, you know, somebody going to try to remake it into something else? Is it going to end up being like this giant demo reel that all of a sudden we have to do it all over again because a major studio wants to pick it up? Who knows? Uh, but the uh, they're still working on it. And a new team has contacted you and I and others. Yep. I talked to them today. Yep. They're thinking about reality television. Reality television and going to the quote unquote edge. Yeah. yeah. Which That's not their I idea. Don't. And I I'm mean, saying, I was trying to explain our concept of the edge and the I don't person know. who doesn't understand the concept of the edge are a different yeah. thing. I don't know if Antarctica would do anything. One. That's what I said too. Like, I mean, you could do so many more things that'll keep people's interest rather than trying to schedule something to go to Antarctica. There's there's too many things. Antarctica, it seems like too slow of a journey to get there. Yes, I mean, and been... also, if they do a show based on Flat Earth is going to Antarctica, 
it's going to be like you said, completely slow paced, slow, boring, extremely slow paced, and also might not prove anything because nope. we don't know if that's where the secrets lie at all. Exactly. You, that if you could want be just a magician's trick to make us think that stuff's there. And maybe you isn't. want ratings, it's easy. You want it polarizing, it's easy. You get hot-headed professors and academics. You do experiments for bo both sides, and you let people duke it out and let people debate it. That's how you create your, your drama and your ratings. And you let the people at home side with one or the other. That's what you do. You don't even have to go out of country if you don't want to. I mean, we, I've had people, I've had people talk about this now for two years. The German people had their act together. And that was, look, we'll travel all over Europe and do flat earth experiments all over Europe. I'm going, yeah, that's what I want to do. And and they said, we, we may do a, a final thing like going to the North Pole. But nobody ever talked about going to the South Pole. Because again, what is it going to prove once you get down there? Fine, you go to the South Pole marker that the GPS system took you to, which you were going to be paced flanked by the military the entire way yeah and where you know all all of the elite have posed for a photo before what is that going to prove no it's not gonna prove anything but right. i appreciate look i i told them uh, great that you guys are thinking of doing this uh, i'll do whatever i i can that's do that's totally what i said but uh, but yeah there's no way that that you're going to be able to come up with a plot line a storyline that is going to be antarctica based it's going to i wouldn't keep my interest i know that Start I, out, keep it simple. Keep it because I told them as well to keep it simple. Yeah. And yeah, I, wow, it's weird. You and I were saying the same things and I talked to them just today and you talked to them a while ago, maybe a week or so ago. Maybe a week. Yeah. yeah. And I also, uh, they asked about some other flat earthers that I thought would be interesting for them to approach. And I dropped three names. I won't say who they are. I don't think I should, right? Uh, No, probably not. Okay. But it doesn't matter. I, I just, I, yeah, I mean, the usual suspects they're, they're trying to track down and demographics yeah. are always tricky because you know you try to get a certain you know demographics you know it's it's different nowadays you have to i'm looking into the live chat just want to say hello to the return of cat's eyes i'm going to be on with cat's eyes at one point some point i believe this coming week I'm not quite sure I want to say um hello to the hori sheet show the hori hello and uh i already have maybe said hello to snack to the future but i don't know I had that half of a shot glass full of drink and who knows what I've repeated. Um, Chris Topher, hello to you. And F.E. Mex is here. And we've got uh, Jimmy and, oh my gosh, there's so many people here. Lacia White. Well, Lacia says everybody needs a break every now and again. And I applaud you, Mark. You know, it's mm -hmm. true. Just need to refocus. Oh, look, okay. different microphone, different background, different t-shirt. This one's got an Egyptian onk on it. Uh-oh, that'll get you in trouble with the people who think everything it? is satanic. You see, it's kind of a rainbow Egyptian onk. That doesn't mean... Oh, I'm rainbow gay. too. So there you go. Yeah, I know. I'm not a gay Egyptian. A gay agenda. I'm, 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 <laughs> a gay Egyptian. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> that is pretty funny, actually. Have you seen the bling on my camel? <laughs> um... Oh God, that's bad. <laughs> You're going to get in trouble over that. There's a lot of camels in Egypt. I was there. You were there. Yeah, indeed. Um, <laughs> I want to say hello to uh, uh, John and Jen, Flat Earth Vegans, and uh, for two reasons, just because they're awesome. And I want you to check out their channel, Flat Earth Vegans, but also because I did an interview yesterday with Mike Williams of the Sage of Quay Radio Hour. He's interviewed me before. He does an interview-based show like I do. Mm -hmm. And it was about Flat Earth, and that was about a year or so ago. This time he approached me and said, I'd like to interview you about veganism. And I said, count me in. And so we talked, did a wonderful interview. It's on his channel and I put it on my channel today and you can go check it out. Please do and give it a thumbs up. I'll make a comment, of course. And in the description box of the video, I put some vegan channels that I like. And I definitely stuck Flat Earth Vegans in there as a new channel that's worth noting. So cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Hey, by the way, uh, the reason why, uh, one of the big reasons I got a different microphone, even though I loved the sound quality of my blue, my white blue brand microphone, mm -hmm. what happened was, again, if you believe in fate or synchronicity, and that was when I got the special customized, ooh, Chris Pontius microphone and plugged it in, computers are a lot smarter nowadays. And it recognized Chris's microphone. And then it said, hey, what the heck is that blue microphone you're using? Because I don't like it anymore. 
And I had to do, I, you know, I used to do tech support for a living and I looked it up and sure enough, blue microphones have a known issue with Windows 10. Yeah. Uh, not, not Macintosh, not Linux or anything like that. Windows. Mine's 10. a blue and I have no problems. But yeah, because you're right on a Mac, Macintosh. Right. But Windows 10, there was a problem and it was a bad problem. I mean, like blue screening my machine all day long to where the more you used it, the, the it was only when you talked into it, it was awful. I could not fix it. And finally, the forums just said, look, there's nothing you can do. And so I said, screw this. And so I just started experimenting with different microphones. And Chris's microphone is fine. It's not the most comfortable to hold. And I still may use it every once in a while. Sound I like the bad. part around it that has words on it. That part's very attractive. Mark Sargent? Yeah, love it. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't I like the fact that it, it creates the light, although it's very attractive to look at. It's quite disconcerting when we watch the colors play across your face. I still may use it eventually, but this is much more subdued. And and I gave the chance. I did a couple video interviews with reporters, and I asked them. As a matter of fact, I asked the Good Morning Britain team I which which microphone I should if I should have it lit or not lit. And they said, nah, not lit. Although BuzzFeed had me light it because he but he didn't use the video part although he saved it so who knows uh so, but anyway i experimented with a bunch of microphones this one was on amazon wasn't that expensive and and i also got a little windscreen for it so i can breathe on it and you won't hear anything i do want to say hello to jibby jedi and cammy is here under the name of aisling 717 hello to teddy c and to five arts liberalis and karen from the sun and moon family hmm. and um all the great people here here I appreciate you being here. If there's anything that you want to ask Mark or myself, feel free to put it in the chat. Not that there's anything you need to ask Mark or me, but sometimes people do want to ask things. Uh, go ahead, put put it in some caps or put some kind of something so that I'm able to notice it. So I got to mention the BuzzFeed thing that happened. Yes, please. It surprised me. Every one of the copyright strikes that I've had, and none of them have stuck, and I've gotten four. None of them have stuck. They've all come out of the blue. I, not like I put it up going, oh, please, please don't strike me. No, they've all been just, I've been totally blindsided by everyone. Uh, the first one was Coast to Coast because they thought that my promo piece was the actual interview and I'm not supposed to put the Coast to Coast interviews. So if anyone wants that one, please let me know and I will send you the audio files and their attorneys can call me later. I don't care. The second one was by an Indian rapper who actually solicited me. He wrote me and goes, hey, can you help promote my cool flat earth rap song? I'm going, yeah, right on. Throw it on my channel. Two hours later, copyright strike. I'm going, dude, what the hell? He hadn't told his uh, producer that he was going to that he wanted me to do this, and you know, left hand didn't know what the right hand was doing. I'm going to take down the freaking strike. So he did. Third one was the Pet Shop Boys because I used a nine minute clip and I was dealing with some sort of intern that apparently was stuffed into lockers as a child and he wanted to like flex his newfound power. And so he was just throwing out strikes like candy and I claimed fair use on that one and got it, which was fine. And, and that one's still up. And then the last one, which happened during my time away was Buzzfeed. And I thought that was very, very interesting because BuzzFeed not only talked to me when I was down at the conference, but we talked separately for like an hour on Skype and they recorded the whole thing to where the BuzzFeed clip has me in it <laughs> several different places. And all of a sudden I get a strike. It's like, what Wait, the Wait, and they had you in it in several different places. Of course, they didn't pay you. There's and a little They a little monetized that. Yeah. Then they copyright strike you for putting it on your own channel. Because again, the left hand didn't know what the right hand was doing. The intern that's smacking me didn't put two and two together. It's like, oh yeah, we're going to hit this guy for putting out a flat earth video. His name is Mark Sargent. And there's actually a Mark Sargent in the video that we're showing. He didn't put those two together. And so I just said, fine, fair use and got it back. Very good. And which was fine. But it was, it was hilarious because of all... The part that was funny was of all the interviews that I did, you and I spoke. I, we thought that BuzzFeed was going to be the, the the hit piece. It was that those are going to be the guys that are going to say, "Oh yeah, you get it. This is a cult. You're going to have to stay away from them." And no, it was actually a decent interview. It was like, "Why believe people believe in the flat Earth?" Yeah, actually, I mean, of course they did their little digs at us here, there, and everywhere. It could have been a lot worse, considering it all could have been worse. I mean, I thought I didn't know the guy was going to treat us fairly or not. I mean, after talking to him, because he was really trying to poke when he was down there and people that talk to him, they're like, oh, be ready for this guy. And it was actually a pretty fair 
thing. Now, of course, he's got way more content that he could use down the line in 2018 if this thing mm. finally breaks open. But we'll have to see. Yes, there's much that will be revealed as we move forward into 2018. Wow, we don't even know what's going to come up. We don't know the highs and lows that we have yet to ride. I think it's going to be a huge monstrous year. Again, only because the, the foundations have been laid and there's another layer on top of it, meaning all the verified channels that could cover it have covered it. And it's in mainstream media pretty much every day. I mean, you probably are on the list for the Flat Earth News Report, you know, that thing that pops in your mailbox. Yes, mm -hmm. And there's always stories in there now to where, and, and when I think it's going to die down, I mean, today's not a great day for it, but Kyrie's always doing stuff. The B.O.B. thing, great, fantastic. Love the fact that Bill Nye went, tried to attack B.O.B. And the B.O.B. responds in a video, which was interesting in itself because he said, um, uh, the, oh yeah, don't don't just take my word for it. Listen to Eric Dubé. It's like, all right, fine, great. You know, at least he endorses somebody. That's what I'm waiting for from Kyrie or other people. Why hasn't Kyrie endorsed anybody yet? Just mention a freaking channel. I don't care if it's mine. Hasn't he said though that he's heard about flat Earth on Instagram or something? Yeah, or? I mentioned that while you were dying in the other room. <laughs> was Instagram? And I don't use Instagram, but you can't do videos on Instagram. You can only link videos in Instagram. So it was interesting that he mentioned that. Why? Well, maybe he's so smart that he didn't want to mention a specific content creator because he knows the infighting and drama that it would cause. Maybe. Maybe. But he's got to have his favorites. Of course. Or maybe he just doesn't want to vet them. He is like, well, maybe you shouldn't endorse anybody because then. Well, I mean, I would imagine if B.O.B., was, you know, saying, obviously, as he did, Eric Dubé is his man, um, that maybe Kyrie thought, yeah, I like Eric Dubé too. That's where I got my info from as well. I'm, I'm just theorizing here. But if I mention Eric Dubé, then people will see the Jew World Order and these other videos, and yeah, that's going to reflect on me. So yeah. I'm just not going to mention the name. But Dubé yeah. was also a fan of Jaronism. Oh, and yes. Jaron actually chatted with him and they had some sort of dialogue until Eric was saying that, oh, yeah, Jaron can't be trusted. It's like, really? That's crazy. I don't know why uh, BLB didn't straight up shout out Jaron. I know. That should have happened. I, I I get it. I mean, you know, he's he's biased because of some of the people he's dealt with over the years. Uh, you know, he's not a fan of Jewish people and I mean, he's not. And so Eric resonated more and maybe that Maybe that's a blessing in disguise because Jaron doesn't care. Mm -hmm. So whatever. I anyway, want to say hello to Chief Crow and the Flat Earthworms. I mentioned you a little bit earlier before you showed up and was talking about good Flat Earth music. And uh, I think that song you've got is, uh, I like other songs that you have, I'm sure. But this is I'm the one that's I'm in a cult. I'm in a cult. I wish I wish I could play it right now. Email me. Anyone anyone that's got flat earth. Okay, two things. One, if anyone's email got email that earth, song to Mark Sargent, please. Email any flat earth music that you don't see on my playlist or you think I've missed, please send it. And honestly, if it doesn't have flat earth in the title, it's a guarantee that I have missed it. Because if and that's the other thing. Put flat earth in the title of your videos. That's what's being searched for. That's what generates our metrics. Helps a lot if you can do that. Also, if you guys and I know there's people out there. I can't believe I have to coax you to do this. If you have flat earth license plates, what are you not sending them to me for? Are you afraid? You're just like, okay, I have it on my car, but I still want to remain somewhat anonymous. Come on, send it to me. It's not like people are going to be hunting you down in the state of whatever. All states are pretty big. So why not send it to me? So please, if you have a flat earth license plate and you haven't seen it in my compilation, send it to me. So Chief Crow, mail your song to msargent23 at comcast.net, please. Or someone else, mail a link to that song. Um, I want to say hello to Martin Liebke as well. And um, let's see. Oh, uh, uh, Gary John is in the chat. And he's mentioning there's only 100 days left to go until the UK uh, convention takes place. Cool. So tickets are on sale now for that. The you know the 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 flat Earth musician which I really enjoyed recently uh, mm. was and I hate to say this because some people say oh he's so crude and that is Delano TV. You know I've never listened to any Delano TV. Also, oh I my god, those good? last two flat Earth songs that he released were stellar. I mean, yeah, it was mostly profanity. You know his his usual 
thing that he does. But my God, they were catchy. I mean, really, really. If you you really haven't listened to him, I don't think so. No. I All right. I, 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 will, I, I will. After we're done here, I will send them to you. Okay. I mean, I had him in the music list. I mean, seriously, he was like fantastic. And I know he can only do so many flat earth videos before he decides I'm going to eat three boxes of cereal challenge type thing. But it was great. I was so it was it, because they're really, really catchy. And they uh, they just add to the, the, the flavor of the flat earth community. I keep trying to express this to different people I interview with, which is how many other conspiracies you want to know the difference between flat earth and, and everything else. It's the community. And that is, yeah, there's some dissension in the ranks, but there is no other conspiracy that makes music for the cause. Find me any sort of list of songs that are written about JFK or the World Trade Center or Pearl Harbor or the moon landing. Or well, wait, wait, wait. I remember this one. It goes something along the lines of this. Chemtrails are cool. <laughs> make sure you learn about them in school. I know that one. That's really <laughs> right. Good. We were thinking of turning that into like a schoolhouse rock thing. Yeah, there aren't songs about other conspiracies, as far yeah. as I know. The, the Steve Martin had a great line about that. He he was basically kind of making fun of the banjo. He goes, "You cannot. There's certain things you can't do depressing songs with because you can't do depressing songs while playing the the banjo." He's going, "Oh, death and sorrow and grief and murder." Da, 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 da. You know. And but that same sort of thing with flat earth you there's it's it's tough to to paint a really really dark picture most of the songs that are in flat earth are really really happy meanwhile there's just a complete absence of songs with everything else find me a happy folk song about jfk oh jfk a shot in the head brains all over you know <laughs> there's you don't see you don't hear any songs Did along Jackie those lines do People, it or was it a magic bullet i don't think <laughs> do it or bullet can be rhymed out so that'd be a good song for jfk for that album it would but no one's going to be even inspired to make it flat earth actually inspires people to it enhances their creativity it does i mean look at the catalog of songs that song that you probably saw round and curvy mm. that 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 thing's amazing i mean i thought the the flat earth guy's song was i mean he he made really really great stuff and i also love the fact that he's what british <laughs> Well, speaking of Flat Earth songs, you know, Flat Earth Man, everybody knows Flat Earth Man. Yeah. There's a new Flat Earth Man song that's going to be debuted this evening, depending upon where you're living. Really? Um, yes, on the Flat Earth Podcast. So go to theflatearthpodcast.com and subscribe. And D-I-T-R-H is a, uh, a Flat Earth Podcaster. So go to flatearthpodcast.com and you'll be able to hear the debut of the brand new Flat Earth Man song, which will be right after the show. Right just on. letting you know. Right on. Yeah. That's really, really cool. Want to say hi to Robbie Davidson. Um, so many people are here in this live chat. And I, I somebody said they asked a question and put it in all caps, but it was moving so fast I was unable to. I've see. got it on full screen. So let's see. Sleeping Warrior, Martin Leakey, go find the others. Peter Mackinson, Martin YouTube, Stephen You don't Chess, do it as good as I do. Sorry. Daniel. Fine. Daniel Hi, Reza, Chill Scammer, Joey <laughs> Sylvie, Robbie Davidson, Plain Truth. Uh, there's a lot of guys just talking to each other. <laughs> Plain um, truth. I really can't find the question that he asked me in all caps. F.E. Max, Mark looks like Dr. Evil. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Well, Super great. That's why I, my black cat, when I was petting her, I felt like with this collar and petting a black cat, I look like sort of a female version. Nice kit dick. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what else is going on? Hey, to plain truth. I'll get you, Mr. Powers. <laughs> Effie Max says that you're Michael Myers, indeed. Um, In the summers, we'd make meat helmets. Pretty standard, <laughs> really. There's somebody who's using the name Meatwad here. So, uh, Markatron. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A <laughs> couple mentions of uh, uh, Metatron have been happening within our... That's always going to be a joke, uh, Metatron, Metatron forever. Thing. Well, well, now they've been trying to expand Metatron to apparently they own several states and most of the corporations. Man, and darn, too bad we aren't really secretly affiliated with them getting lots of money. Oh, where did I go it's wrong? A, it's a good name. <laughs> it is. It sort of sounds sinister. Mark is my Beyonce. I don't know what that means. Neither do I. Um, but I'll say his name again. See. Daniel Reza. <laughs> You're just not doing that well at it. Sorry. Oh, what? Flat Earth Math is here as well. Ukdina says, Hail Metatron. 
Yeah, that's the that's the thing. Hail Metatron. Post that everywhere you go. Uber Flat Earth. I hope I get to do UCLA. I, I we'll see. We'll see. I put the decl. What I, I also put the declaration of war in every description of every all one thousand videos. I just put it in there so that it can't be missed. There was something I wanted to talk about in my mind. Boop. After that episode where I had to leave the room because when I was watering and I was choking. Uh, I got stuff. All right, you go with your stuff and my okay. stuff will. <clears throat> Two things. One, you'll notice that a few things have changed in YouTube. If you sort by upload date, we have broken 18.9 million as of this morning, mm. which is fantastic. We're never going to catch Donald Trump, just so you know, nor really should we. I mean, the man can. Who'd want to be behind Donald Trump anyway? That'd be just darn gross. Uh, yeah. Uh, man, who knows? We, he may be impeached before this thing is over. The. Um, and if you sort by view count, it, what I've noticed is as long as you keep making flat earth videos, as long as, you know, your most recent flat earth videos are, are flat or most videos are flat earth based, you will be ranked higher in sorting by view count. Most people don't know that. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. And I, yeah. I've been, I hadn't made, I made a video yesterday. Oh, I didn't. I interviewed Karen B. It's on my channel. And was it yesterday or the day before? I lost track. But then again, I mentioned that Mike Williams of Sage of Quay and I did an interview yep. yesterday. And that's on my channel too. But before that, I hadn't done anything since the end of December with Ira Landucci. I sometimes just take time off and just don't do any videos. Just don't right. feel in the mood. But if you're going to be a good YouTuber and are here to make money or to make a splash, you should probably make a video every day or every other day. Uh, it depends. I mean, yeah, every day for some people, I kind of get drug into it because I have to do promos. Yes, of course. So there you go. That's what that's what it is. It's like keep it coming. Don't let people forget your name. Did you catch the the Toronto promo? You oh, you never probably saw Scott Pilgrim versus the World. I actually did in the theater. I know you think that's weird, but for you, no, that's extremely weird. It is. Was extremely it, it was actually a date. It well it was a with boy, a guy, boyfriend, <laughs> a real guy, <laughs> my what? last boyfriend, and not that big oh, yeah. giant mistake, but the ago. real so, last 20, boyfriend that I've 20, talked about from Scotland. 2010, 2011. Uh, that boyfriend relationship kind of drug out to an end, and then maybe ended in 2011 or 2012. Yeah, because Scott Pilgrim. Anyway, the the movie was set in Toronto. Yeah, yeah, and so that's why I included that thing. I thought that when they were making fun of Toronto, and I left that one part in for you, where he get where the guy gets superpowers and he's holding him, Scott, and he's going, "Didn't you know, Scott's v or uh, crap? What's his name? Uh, shoot, I forgot his name. Some such as say is Paul. Paul's vegan because he got yes. powers from veganism. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's funny. Had, had great lines. Well, like Kyrie Irving, who just said, "Oh my Matt God, you read that, that commercial." Well, there's a huge article in him. I think it's in Sports Illustrator, USA Today. He's plant based. Where, uh, where, yeah, plant based diet. I mean, he goes on, you know, where's him in sort of like a Zen pose. It's a cartoon of him. But they go, it's a big thing where he's saying that, that Kyrie's leading the trend of basketball players to be leaner and lighter. There's a reason why steroids, steroid use never made it into the NBA, and that is you always gain weight, which right. means your vertical jump goes down. Mm. Yeah, you're stronger and stuff, but you, you're not going to be able to dunk as at, at, at different ranges. And so basketball players stayed away from steroids for the most part because they haven't come up with a version that increases your vertical leap, as far as I know. So Kyrie's gone the other way, which is plant-based diet to even go leaner to where you're even lighter to where you can your, your vertical leap is enhanced even more. You can eat a lot of food when you're vegan or plant-based if you prefer to call it that. Right. Um, you you can eat all the time, and I do eat all the time. And people think that I've been around like, why do you, you you're so thin? How can you eat so much? But it's because the calories. I mean, it, you're not eating those not dense. calorie dense yeah. foods right. for the most part. Although, if, I mean, if you, because I have a, in my survival gear, I have quite a few nuts. Yes, if you eat a lot of nuts, I don't eat, eat a lot, lot of nuts. nuts. You can gain some weight. I mean, there's some nuts out there that are pretty. Pretty beefy calories. Mm -hmm, definitely. Uh, macadamia. I mean, nuts are delicious. Nuts are good, but they're like a treat food, in my opinion. But actually, definitely a great emergency food. Well, um, for me, if, yeah, if I had to go vegan, nuts would be a pretty uh, staple. What's your favorite nut? You're mine. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist. Wow. <laughs> what are we quoting? Bad Valentine cards? <laughs> 
<laughs> like like the what is it? The I I choo choo choose you with a train on it. Oh, I remember Valentine cards. I mean, in the '60s when I was very young, you'd get cards and you'd give them out to the children in your school, and they were those very very vintagey looking cards. Yeah, we, we I know we did that. I think in first grade and second grade, and then they stopped doing it. Yeah, I, th I think I don't know if it's still done these days. I, but but you felt bad because. You know, there's some kids that had piles of them, and then other kids didn't have uh, that. These many. days, the way they would do it would be every child has to bring, like, if there's 30 children in the class, you must bring 30 Valentines. And therefore, there's nothing special about getting one if everyone gets one. It's like giving right. a trophy to every child for participating in a sporting event or a, so, or a debate. Don't get me started. At that point, I yeah, want to be the child with all the Valentines. Sorry. People, sorry, parents <laughs> that are using, or teachers that are using purple pens because they're not as upsetting as using red pens. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. It's just a hard life now yeah. to be a parent or a, a, oh, a teacher with all of kid. this political correctness. And but no, with a child, it might even be easier for them because they get all the Valentines, they get all the awards um, and I, just for like breathing. And I considered being a teacher at some point. I was a member when I was in my first year. I'm sorry, second year. You would have been a good teacher, and you became one with Flat Earth Clues. I, I did. Thank you. Uh, it, and there's a lot of teachers in my family. But I remember I was the only guy in that class. It was like 16 women, me. Oh, so you wanted to be a teacher just to pick up the chicks? No, I had no idea. I had no – well, because when I went through my school system, you know, there's male. there was quite a few male teachers. Although, in hindsight, first through fifth grade were all women. And then my sixth grade teacher was a guy. So it didn't even occur to me that I had only one teacher in the younger years, um, my third grade teacher uh, that was male. Mm -hmm. So, and he was my favorite teacher. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I wanted to mention um, Ireland and the Isle of Man and Sleeping Warrior and uh, uh, Ranty Rant Rant and Nathan Oakley and perhaps Chris Seely Monk. I'm not quite sure how many will be on my show on Friday to talk about something that you shared on your channel uh, as well. You you shared the uh, revelations that they have come up with about the fact that you can see farther than you're supposed to, thus proving the earth is not a ball. Oh, right, and right, right. to explain that a lot better than I just did, please join me on my show on this Friday, two days from today. The 19th of January 2018 for this special program. So, um, there was something I was going to. Oh, and Ranty Rant Rant um, is going to be, if, if you know him by that name, is going to be my guest for an interview, not particularly about that subject, but about himself, um, Shane, Shane Cook, about his life, who he is, etc. So, he's going to be my guest tomorrow cool. at uh, 6 p.m. Eastern Time here on this very same channel the 18th of January, 2018. Cool. Uh, what else was I going to mention to you? The virtue. Oh, oh, real quick, because I've been mm -hmm. noticing that you know, you've heard of the one of our debunker regulars, uh, Soundly. You've heard yes. of that guy? Yeah. Yes, indeed. I'm, I'm sorry. Every time, every time I see him post a video, he uses that stupid thumbnail of the bridge curving, you know, over the over the horizon. It's yes. Like, you're you you're kind he's kind of using one of our one of our things against us which is seeing is believing that's like yeah but eight inches per mile squared even if it was real wouldn't look like that that bridge has such a severe curve the degrees of curvature on that are so severe and we're only talking a few miles away and it's already bowing like this right we'd that's, be living on a really 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 small earth like I mean, the thing wouldn't even be wouldn't even be yeah wouldn't even be <laughs> oh, a couple hundred miles wide if that was the case, no. so how are you even pulling it off? It's because it's like, well, it looks curved. That's why he's leaving it up there. I gotta say, it's it's fairly clever of him. Well, to do so. if you don't really have facts on your side, just make things up. Most people won't notice. Maybe that's the theory there. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, a couple other things I want to mention. Uh, the flat Earth. I'm just looking at some of the videos I released on mine, which were mirrors from other people. Uh, I want to draw some attention to them. One was the. Did I? Did you see the one on the skylight? 
Oh yes, that? yes, the skylight where you can be in a basement and look up and there's a skylight with a blue sky and a sun because it's not real. They can create that, which I think is a, a lovely effect to have in your home if you don't have much light. But also, it shows what they can do now with technology. It's very clever because what they were showing was, let's say you didn't buy the penthouse of an apartment building. Let's say you were on the third floor, the you know, from the top, second, you know, second from the top, third from the top. You can put in these skylights and no one would know any different. It's like, oh, wow, I didn't know you're in the penthouse. It's like, you're not. <laughs> because on a sunny day, it looked identical. They walked people underneath these things and they could not tell the difference. That's how good it was. They simulated what the trick was. They simulated sort of like a fuzzy atmosphere between the sun and the ground. The sun in the edge of the screen. And it was interesting that how they did that. And they could fake people out and have them live in an underground bunker for an extended period of time with those right. fake skylights to make them feel happier and more content with life. Maybe when astronauts go and are shot into space, you know, uh, or go on the ISS where they're really going, we've always thought underground bunker somewhere, right? They've got to go somewhere like a spending a year in space like Scott Kelly, where does he go? Well, maybe in that underground bunker, they do have those visual effects like those fake skylights. Otherwise, yeah, I think you'd go nuts. Right. Or call me crazy. You just make a really, really big version of that. And then you can hide an entire civilization in it. Oh, check flat earth clues for more details. Exactly. <laughs> the um, couple other things I want to mention, uh, the BuzzFeed thing, that's back up. Thank you. And they, you know what the part was that bugged me? And I know they did it deliberately was they crippled it. So by the time I got it reinstated, it was already so far down the list. No one's ever going to find it again. So it doesn't even have a thousand views now. I was like, great. Oh, that's no good. Assholes. The other one was um, flat earth curvature test, the flat earth water test on freezing temperatures. Did you remember seeing that one? The guy, the guy did it with his wife at 7.53 miles. And the reason why I mentioned this is they did it on a lake that was just about to freeze to where the edges were starting to freeze already. And he put his camera maybe three feet uh, on the ice, on the, on the edge of the bank. And he has wife 7.53 miles away. And she just took a, a flashlight, like a square boxy flashlight and literally put it on the ice and he could see it. Oh, I remember watching that when they couldn't see each other, but the light and he was he instructing see. her like, go, yep. go farther down. Yes, I remember now. And the reason why that's significant is when you, if you want to do tests over water, and I know it kind of limits Nothing you. was almost eight miles across. Yeah, it was. The, what, the reason that's significant is because it the, the very, very cold temperatures reduce atmospheric distortion. So kind of like that snowmobile guy that did it with a laser, where, you know, across a really, really frozen lake where he was driving across, he could see the laser. This was like a calm, less Blair Witchy version of that. But it was very, very true. Look, we're talking about a camera that's three feet off the ice and the light is literally on the ice and he could see it eight miles. That thing should have been long gone. And the reason why it worked was because there was no waves, no atmospheric distortion, no atmospheric lensing. The cold temperatures is what brought everything down. So if you want to do really, really great temperature or t tests, do it in cold weather. If you can do it. I know it's not optimum for people that are in warm climates, and but it's it really, really helps. Very interesting. Just to mention. I want to say um, hello to Bob of Globebusters, who's popped in to say hello. And uh, Elspeth Awake is reminding us of who it was. I know you've put it on your channel, but I couldn't remember who did it. And it was Taboo Conspiracy. So, taboo conspiracy. yeah, we need to give credit where credit is due with the flashlight and the lake. Right. Oh, right, 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 right. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I, I should have probably clicked on the link of that. Mm -hmm. The um, another one was when I did my declaration of war, I mentioned the thumbnail and I'm going to call this out in, in a science group that they have me. And that's like, look, the war was declared officially the war on science. You guys can look this up. Type in war on science, natural Ge national geographic. That's all you have to do is type that in in Google and then hit images. You will see. Uh, I don't know if you remember this, but in March of 2015 was when National Geographic showing like a fake moon setup where they were, were like stationing, you know, they showed like a fake moon stage where they were saying the war on science began. That was the cover. And one of the things in it was that people don't believe in the moon missions. And so I, I'm trying to tell science, I said, look, the war has been going on now for the better part of three years. You just haven't been involved. Not our fault. You were the ones that declared it. We didn't. National Ge Geographic is one of theirs like popular science or popular mechanics or what are the other science ones they use they really really love i don't remember nova or i don't know mm -hmm. anyway. i can't think of one right now sorry 
I, I digress just mm. a, a little bit. Anything else you got? I'm all fresh out of things to say. Uh, one last thing was please check out, if you haven't done so already, the virtual reality one that I mentioned. Yes. The Flat Earth and how virtual reality can work. It's not my original piece. It's taken from another video. I snipped out a 10-minute chunk of it, but it really shows what developers can do. It basically explains the entire premise of virtual reality, the double slit experiment, and quantum entanglement. If we could do virtual reality in our world now, it would be, there's a movie where people are uh, going into like holodecks and they've got these helmet ons with virtual reality and they're sort of hanging there and right. they, they're, they're, they're almost like, um, heroin users in a, in a, in a, in a den, you know, just losing all. Oh, there's several movies about just that. Just wasted basically, but they're not wasted on. Like I think you're talking, I think on you're talking about an inception. Yeah, inception on virtual reality. Yep. Exactly. And if we could have that technology, like the holodecks and like Star Trek, right. that would change the way our world is, where people would not want no to participate one would care about anything. in anything. No, they would it, only want to get to their next holodeck experience. That is very astute of you, Patricia, because, and, and I know we're wrapping it up, but I got to mention this, which is the creator of the beloved nerd comic strip Dilbert, if you remember that, the creator of Dilbert actually wrote in the beginning of one of his books that he was talking about the future. Oh, Dilbert. Said, Wasn't that that office-based comic yeah, strip? Dilbert okay. and Dogbert, the guy yes, with the glasses and the dog with the glasses. And they right. always do tech support. And it was funny. Uh, and yeah, lots of tech support, support guys would clip out Dilbert strips and put them in their cubicles when people used to have cubicles. And he was talking about the future and he goes, he goes, really? And he was, he was on the money when he said this. He goes, the very last, because of what you just said, the very last invention we will create is the holodeck. Because once we recreate that, no one is going to care about anything else. All they're going to do is work the bare minimum so that they can pay for their holodeck time. No one is going to want to do anything. Uh, there was a Bruce Willis movie along those lines where they used robots instead of holodecks, but there was that sort of thing where they lived at home and just let themselves go to waste because they wanted to live in the avatar that was the holodeck. And so hope, I, which is why also I believe that we'll never be allowed to do that because at that point you're talking about a world within a world and that defeats the whole purpose of where we are now. Mm. So. I want to say hello to Teen Eldridge, and I don't know if I said hello to Lucy Lemons and Nathan Oakley yet. If not, hello. And Glenn Parent is here too. Also, Water Runs Downhill, Not Up a Ball. Interesting oh. channel name. Uh, he or she says, if this is a virtual reality, then water should be able to run uphill, but no. <laughs> Let me think. Well, you well know, water can do whatever <laughs> can do you want. It, you know. at that point. Yeah, it's, it's not like they're going to break the rules. I mean, what are the rules? Hmm. That's right. Don't get me started. Ah, so what will 2018 bring all of us? Hopefully, happiness and health, and in the words of Flat Earth Vegans, more flat smacking. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'm hoping for the best. I think it's going to be a big year. Everything's already, all the foundations laid. The, the media knows about it. Everyone in the media knows about this topic now. It's not like a, a fluke thing where it's like, wait, what? No, everyone's already been talking about it. So where, does, where do we go from here? Um, I'm curious to see. We have some control over it based on how we act and how we treat each other and how we work together. And then there's a lot that we have no control over. And that part just makes it exciting. Yeah, agreed. All right. This concludes episode number 203 of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, The Secret Show. It's back. And I can't say we're never going to go away again because we don't know. <laughs> but for now, you're stuck with us. <laughs> Please subscribe to Mark Sargent's channel if you've not already. In the description box, you'll find a link. Please subscribe to this channel, Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, and give the video a thumbs up. And um, also, after this video renders to YouTube, come back and make a comment if you enjoyed the show or if you didn't enjoy the show. It all helps push the video forward. And I think they call it in YouTube lingo, engagement. I do want to mention the Flat Earth Podcast with uh, D-I-T-R-H at uh, theflatearthpodcast.com is going to be previewing a new Flat Earth Man song right around now. Cool. So thanks to everyone, and we will see you next time around, next Wednesday at the same time, 6 p.m. Eastern, we think anyway. 
<laughs> from Mark Sargent and myself, keep it flat. George Clooney. Yes, he's still with us in 2017.